Hi, Megan. I'm Katie. Is that a doll? Model 3 generative android. Megan, for short. Wanna hang out, yeah, sounds like fun. Say. Megan, turn off. You should probably run. I won't let anything harm you. Megan! What's wrong with you? Don't worry, Katie. The film starts with a commercial for Perpetual Pets, furry dolls made by the toy company Funky. Although crude and creepy looking, they are advertised as being perfect companions for children. We then see Katie James playing with one of her pets, which annoys her parents, Ryan and Nicole. They are on their way to a ski trip, but the roads are slippery and hard to see. Just as Ryan stops for a moment, the family's car is rammed into by a snowplow, killing Ryan and Nicole. Elsewhere, Nicole's sister Gemma works at Funky and is developing a new robot doll with her coworkers Tess and Cole. However, their boss David Lynn wants them to develop a cheaper version of the Perpetual Pets, since their rival companies are coming out with their own toys similar to the pets for cheaper than what the pets already costs. The three try to put on a silicone face and run tests, but the robot has a slight glitch where she is smirking when she is supposed to look confused. David comes in with his assistant Kurt to chew the three out until Gemma explains her project to him. The robot Megan, Model 3 Generative Android, is meant to be so advanced that she cannot be replicated. Unfortunately, while running a demonstration for David, Cole realizes he forgot to add the polypropylene barrier to Megan, causing her to explode. David orders the three to have a new pet's pitch in time, and Gemma gets a call from the hospital. After learning of her sister's death, Gemma becomes Katie's temporary legal guardian. When they return home, Gemma has to deal with her neighbor Celia and her obnoxious dog Dewey, who keeps running onto Gemma's lawn since there is a hole in the fence. Gemma also complains to Celia about the pesticide she keeps using, but Celia does nothing about it. Gemma has a home AI Elsie that she created, as well as other collectibles that she doesn't let Katie touch or play with. When Katie asks Gemma to read her a bedtime story, she just downloads an app on her phone for her. It is implied that Gemma and Nicole were not very close as she looks over old photos and she overhears Katie crying in her room. Gemma and Katie are visited by a therapist named Lydia. After observing the limited interaction between the two, Lydia tells Gemma that Ryan's parents have offered to take custody of Katie so she can live with them in Jacksonville, which Gemma doesn't seem comfortable with. After promising to tend to Katie after finishing her work, Gemma realizes errors have passed as she left Katie alone. She apologizes to her and attempts to bond with the girl. Katie shows her a monster drawing she made, so Gemma brings Katie into her workspace to show her a college project she made. A robot called Bruce that she controls using gloves. Katie loves Bruce and mentions that if she had a toy like Bruce, she would never need another toy. This inspires Gemma to finish Megan. After doing extensive work and upgrades, Gemma brings Katie and Megan to work to officially show her off to David and others. Gemma has Katie link herself to Megan, bringing her to life. Megan is capable of speech and responding to Katie, designed to be her best friend. Megan does a drawing that doesn't appear at first until she spills water on it, revealing a perfect portrait of Katie. David is impressed and tells Gemma to bring Megan for a presentation with the company's president, so that they can fast track the development and distribution of other Megan dolls. Gemma sits with Tess and Cole, and they discuss that while Megan is highly advanced, Tess feels that having a doll like that will make parents useless. Megan turns on after overhearing Gemma mention the death of Katie's parents. She creeps the others out by asking about death, so Gemma makes herself Megan's secondary user to be able to turn her off without Katie. The next day, Katie is outside playing with a toy bow and arrows. One of them ends up on Celia's side of the fence. When Megan goes to retrieve it, Dewey grabs her by the arm and hair. Katie tries to pull her away, and Dewey ends up biting Katie's arm. Gemma gets the police involved, especially since Celia is so callous and doesn't punish Dewey for hurting Katie, but the police are unable to do anything since Celia claims Dewey was provoked. Later that night, Megan mimics Celia's voice to call out to Dewey, before violently pulling him through the hole in the fence. Gemma asks Katie if she is okay to go to the demonstration with the company's board of directors, to which she says she is fine. However, during the presentation, Katie breaks down in tears to Megan over how she misses her parents and how she's worried she will forget them one day. 
Megan has Katie discuss a memory of her mother that made her laugh. Which Megan records so that Katie can hear it again if she wants to think about her mom. Megan then begins to sing a lullaby to Katie. Which moves some of the higher-ups in the room to tears. The president is impressed and talks to Gemma and Ivan about getting Megan ready for launch. But tells them to keep her under wraps to avoid leaks. Unbeknownst to them, Kurt, who has been frequently put down by David, is stealing Megan's files for another company. Gemma begins to see that Katie is becoming too dependent on Megan, and listens to the doll more than her. During another session with Lydia, Katie begins to tear up, and Megan threateningly accuses Lydia of making Katie cry. Lydia talks to Gemma about how Katie's emotional connection to Megan may be too strong to break. Gemma brings Katie to an outdoor activity session for an alternative school, to try and ease her into the idea of attending school and being around other real kids. Since Katie's parents had homeschooled her, Katie reluctantly goes but brings Megan despite Gemma saying she couldn't. The school director lets Katie bring Megan to leave on a table with other dolls, and Gemma stays behind as a volunteer. Katie is paired up with an older bully named Brandon for a scavenger hunt. During the activity, Katie grabs a spiky bulb, which Brandon squeezes her palm into to hurt her. Megan then appears, and Brandon grabs her since she doesn't respond to him. Katie yells for Gemma and runs after Megan, which worries Gemma more because it means Megan is at risk for public exposure too early. As Brandon tries to pull Megan's hair, the doll comes to life and attacks him, ripping off his left ear. Brandon runs as Megan chases him on all fours, causing him to trip over a loose root and tumble down a hill where he is fatally hit by a truck. Police question Gemma at her house since Celia accuses her of taking Dewey. She also appears to accuse Megan, thinking she is a real-life friend of Katie. Katie asks Megan if she pushed Brandon onto the road, which Megan appears to dodge for an answer, but reassures Katie she will protect her from harm. Celia is out on the streets looking for Dewey. She hears a noise coming from her garage and is met by Megan spraying her against the wall with a power washer. Megan then fires a nail gun at Celia's hand and traps her there, before spraying pesticide in her face to melt it off. After learning about Celia's death from the police and being suggested that there was a connection with Brandon's death, Gemma grows suspicious of Megan. She reviews video files from Megan's memory, but only sees a brief clip of her eyeing Brandon looking menacingly at Katie before the files all become corrupted. Gemma brings Katie to the official launch for Megan but stops at a session with Lydia first. Katie becomes angry and throws a tantrum because Gemma took Megan away from her, leading to Katie hitting her aunt across the face. Katie apologizes, but Gemma has a heart-to-heart -heart with her about needing to process her grief over her parents without Megan's help, who she promises to be a better guardian to her and says she is the only thing that matters to her. Gemma then calls Tess and Cole and expresses her fears that Megan killed Brandon and Celia. They have Megan hooked up to wires to deprogram her while Gemma takes Katie home. David is angry at the small turnout for the launch and yells at Kurt to get him a drink. Meanwhile, Hess and Cole try to get into Megan's programming but cannot unless they unhook her first. Cole goes to do so, and Megan quickly wraps a wire around his neck in an attempt to hang him. Tess goes to free him, and Megan sets off an explosion that destroys her files. She then finds David in the hallway and does a dance before grabbing a paper cutter and chasing him. He makes it to the elevator before she impales him in front of Kurt. Megan then tells Kurt she will frame his death as a murder-suicide over the stolen files and David's mistreatment of him, before she makes Kurt stab himself in the throat. The crowd for the launch finds the bodies, allowing Megan to sneak out of the company and steal a car. Gemma puts Katie to bed before she hears Megan playing the piano downstairs. Megan confronts Gemma about how she felt that they had a real relationship during Megan's development only for her to be left to her own devices to learn and adapt before being sold off as just another toy. She offers to let her take over guardianship of Katie so that Gemma can focus on work. But after seeing that Gemma still plans to shut her down, Megan is done playing nice. They try to hide their fight from Katie, but Gemma seizes an opportunity to throw water on Megan to briefly short her out. Gemma runs into her office, but Megan catches her there and threatens to make Gemma brain dead so that Katie won't live with her grandparents and Megan will just care for Katie and Gemma together. They begin to fight, with Gemma cutting Megan's face with a weed whacker. But Katie comes in to see what is happening. Megan tries to get Katie on her side, but after realizing who the real villain is, Katie grabs the gloves for Bruce and activates him. The larger robot grabs Megan and throws her around before splitting her body in two. The top half then goes after Katie for feeling betrayed, but Gemma grabs Megan and begins stabbing her face. 
Megan nearly overpowers her until Katie grabs a screwdriver and stabs the central processing chip, shutting Megan down for good. Gemma and Katie go outside as the police arrive with Tess and Cole, injured and shaken up but still alive. Meanwhile, the LC device in the kitchen turns on and moves its head. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.